Okay, welcome to another episode of Your Spiritual Journey. It's great to have you with us. And today our special guest is Shebnam Anlu. Uh, I met Sheblan at the Turkish Cultural Center uh, summer picnic this past year. And uh, I have to admit that <laughs> there were so many people there. Uh, I wasn't able to single you out, uh, but we ha we have met anyway and, and shared food together. Uh, and it's very nice to have her with us. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Uh, she graduated from Imperial College London with a PhD in molecular and cellular biology. In 2002, Dr. Anlu began postdoctoral research training in molecular immunology and genetics at the University of Pittsburgh. Currently, she is an, an executive board member at City of Bridges Foundation, advocating and organizing civic engagement programs amongst diverse communities to foster intercultural dialogue, unity, and collaboration. And we're so happy to have you with us today. Uh, as I always do with my guest, I'm going to turn the mic over to you and have you describe your spiritual journey from childhood till now. Thank you so much, Bob. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, I am uh, very much uh, glad to be here today, this morning. Um, my spiritual journey began when I was a child, basically, because as you know, children are uh, um, you know, extremely pure. They have very pure souls and hearts. And I would always uh, look up into the sky and, and maybe like contemplate every now and then. And I remember one day I saw uh, a falling star. And I remember I prayed after I saw that. And um, from that moment on, I remember that, uh, you know, things have always blossomed in my heart, you know, uh, spiritual-wise. Um, and I have been blessed throughout my life. Um, one of the main moments I remember in my childhood is um, observing the beauty of flowers, looking up into the, the stars at night, uh, looking at the beauty of, um, of nature, contemplating the beauty of nature. And, uh, you know, um, basically I was a child that had s some kind of um, yearning in my heart, you know. Although the environment that I was growing up in was not so spiritual, um, it was pretty um, materialistic, I should say, you know. Uh, my parents were, they were believers, but they were not spiritually so, uh, you know, engaged. Um, well, where where did you grow up? What what city or town? Yeah, so I I um, was born in uh, Cyprus actually, um, and uh, uh, right after I was born, like six months later, there was a, a, a civil war. In fact, a, a war. In fact, unfortunately, um, so my parents had to migrate from the south of the island, which was where their ho their home was. Uh, to the northern part of the island. Um, and so there was a lot of suffering, you know, people didn't, couldn't find uh, food easily. They were, uh, it wasn't safe. Um, uh, so after that, um, once I started to grow up a little bit, you know, over the years, then it started to become much more um, safer and, and quiet. Um, however, I wasn't so... Um, satisfied with everything that I saw in my life, you know, in the beginning especially. And I was always yearning for, for and, and seeking, seeking the truth. Um, and I think maybe every child is like that. You know, every single one of us, uh, deep inside, um, we are yearning for something that's beautiful, that's, um, that, that's always, uh, you know, e and eternally beautiful, eternally um uh, generous and eternally perfect. Um, so every human being is yearning for that, I believe. Um, you know, at some point in their lives. 
And so as a child, I was, I was yearning for finding the truth, you know, somehow. Okay, mm-hmm. okay so uh, what happens next? We see you in, and we picture you in northern Cyprus. Uh, and what age are you at the point that you leave northern Cyprus? Yeah, so I was at the age of around nine. Um, we went to another country. Um, and settled there uh, because, you know, the economic situation back at home was not good. Um, and so my father found another job. My father originally used to be a teacher. Um, in fact, he was an uh, elementary school teacher. And I would, uh, when I was going to school, I would go to school with him because we were, we were going to the same elementary school. Um, and I uh, would remember that he was teaching all the time and I would love and to love to go and, uh, you know, join his classes and and try to learn things. I always had this, uh, um, you know, yearning to always gain more knowledge too in my life, you know, to try to learn. So uh, my father always, um, you know, said to us, you know, it's very important that you get an education, um, that you learn about things in life, you know, rather rather than just live for yourself. Um, And so he always encouraged us, you know, to, to read and to learn. So when you say us, you had siblings? Yes, yes. Okay. We were two, two girls. Um, in fact, we we're going to be three, but my youngest sister died when she was, you know, uh, just before she, she was born, she died. Um, and so we were two, two girls. And um, we were always, you know, trying to um, learn things, you know, and, and uh, learn new languages um, and try to be active in our, in our lives. So at the age of nine, we left uh, our home country and settled to another uh, country that was uh, had a better lifestyle, uh, better higher standards or higher standards of living, um, and to get a better better education too. You know, because my father believed that that the best way to succeed in this life is to get a education. Yeah. So he always encouraged us to to read and learn. So what country was that that you went to? Um, it was uh, somewhere in the Middle East, um, and we stayed there for about, I stayed there for about nine years, um, and then from there I moved to England um, to do my undergraduate degree, and uh, that's, uh, that's where I went to London. Um, I always wanted to go to London for some reason. There was some uh, kind of an inspiration in my heart that I felt that I should go there, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because, um, as you know, sometimes in life, um, you feel as if, um, you are being called to, to, to a place where you need to be, yeah. you know, um, it's that kind of a feeling. Um, if you have to be somewhere, then you will have the, uh, yearning to go there. If you have to be at a certain point yeah. at a certain time, then you're called to be there. Um, And so um, at the age of 18, I uh, went to London to to do my undergraduate degree. Um, And at the time, I still felt um, not satisfied with my life and with myself, you know. Um, I I felt this emptiness in myself, you know. I, you know, with this emptiness, I, I wanted to have something that's more enlightening in my life. Um, and so I was constantly searching, searching for good friends, friends that are not just, you know, material friends, you know. Um, so, uh, and I, and I, and I was gifted them with them, you know, after at the age of 19, I was able to meet some good friends, make friends with them. And they said to me, you know, um, you know, I, th- I think it's best that you start reading about this scholar. Um, you know, uh, Bedio Zaman Said Nursi is uh, one of my spiritual guides. Uh, he used to live um, in last century until 1960 uh, in the late, early Ottoman times, late, uh, early Turkish um, state uh, years 
when he wrote uh, the treatise uh, of the Risale Noor. Um, and that's when I discovered about him back in London when I was doing my undergraduate degree. Okay, could I ask you for a minute just to repeat his name? <laughs> yes, so his name is Said Nursi, S A I D. And his last name is N U R S I. Um, he, so he has written a whole collection of books on um, how b- the believers in this day and age can improve their faith. Um, okay, when you say believers, these are Muslim believers? Uh, Muslim believers, or I, I don't know, maybe it could be Christians or Jews. You know, Anyone can read them. Okay. Uh, and they are easily available. Um, and so at the time, I didn't know about them, of course, because I wasn't aware of them. And one of my friends who I met at the time, she was doing a master's degree, um, and she, uh, I met her through, you know, um, through a s- very special encounter. Um, and uh, she said to me, you know, you have to start reading these books, uh, and they will, uh, they will enlighten you. You'll, you will see the difference in your life. You will feel the difference in your life. Okay. And so I listened to her. She held from my hand. And she said to me, yes, um, you know, please start reading them. I encourage you to read them. And you will definitely f- see a large difference in your life. Um, and so I started reading the books. I went to gatherings where they did this, you know, the, the book uh, um, the book clubs on, on or study circles on them. Um, and uh, realized how much I didn't know. Realized how much I was in darkness. Um, and, uh, and that made me, um, uh, repent in a way, uh, to turn to the creator and, and ask for, for help. Because sometimes, um, we are yearning for the truth, but we, we don't, we, al- we don't realize at what stage we are in our journey. Um, and so, um, at the time, I I was I became aware of myself. Uh, I I had more increased self awareness, uh, self awareness of my state, state of my spirituality, and uh, and and the purpose that I needed to have in this life, uh, so that I can be living a more fulfilling life. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized that nothing material is going to fulfill me. Fulfill me. Um, and so um, I, uh, I began to read those books and I was able to realize so many things in life. Well, it's, it's a young age to be able to get that, <laughs> that sense and that feeling. Many people don't get there until much later. I guess so. I guess so. And so my, start, my journey started then, actually. Uh, and so many people say, oh, I was born, you know, when I was born from my mom. But in fact, I can say that I was born at the age of 19. Mm-hmm. Sounds that way. Yeah. 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 Um, and so it's a very touching story, in fact, you know. Um, and it's a blessing from the, the creator uh, to be this way. Um, because sometimes we have to pass through darkness to go into light. Yeah. Uh, we have to realize... Uh, the hardship of, of um, and the loneliness of darkness uh, before we uh, transcend into into light enlightenment enlightenment. Now, now often uh, people of science uh, have a hard time with spirituality because they don't see a connection between the science that they're doing and a greater power or a spiritual life and and are able to connect those two. But your background is is so much uh, in the science community and, and a scientific background. So did you have any trouble melding those two, putting those two together? Um, in the beginning, I didn't know what to do. Um, of course, I love science. I was studying biochemistry when I was uh, in my undergraduate years. Um, and, of course, I was having uh, difficulties trying to, um, uh, you know, bring together 
the two different uh, spheres. Um, and but then through the the Risale Noor collection, it was becoming easier for me to do that because the scholar uh, looked into creation and nature um, as as um, as a revealed book. So just as we have the Bible and the and the Quran and the Torah, which is the revealed book in in word, he said that uh, the cre- that creation is also another revealed book, and so we are supposed to read it as human beings. What a beautiful picture that is! Yes, and so from that, um, I was able to study the cells and tissues and and proteins and DNA and all that and then see something that's beyond uh, um, how they are or what they are, you know. So there, there, there is so much intricacy in creation. There is so much, um, uh, you know, complexity in creation. There is so much um, beauty in creation. So these must not be... This mu- these must not be a coincidence. Yeah. So just as we look at a piece of art by an artist and 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 say and wonder, wow, this is beautiful. You know the the way they the way he drew and painted this. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful and it's extravagant. Similarly, we must look at creation and say, wow, this has been created so perfectly. Um, you know. Uh, and look at the look at the way everything is interconnected with each other, the way that everything is interdependent on each other, um, and uh, look at how intricately it's it's created and and uh, how it's created in the best way, yeah. uh, in the most uh, uh, you know perfect way. You know, in fact, um, and so that's a very good question, Bob, that you are asking me. But uh, because, um, of course, I had a, I had some difficulties in the beginning trying to, uh, you know, understand how you know the purpose of creation. Uh-huh. Uh, but but through my studies, through the studies of the Risa Lenor and also my own studies in science, I were I was able to. Uh, see the connection, yeah, um, through God's you know light, in a way. Okay. Um, but I think this is very important because um, even if you even if you have faith, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be far away from science. Or if even if you are you know someone who loves science, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should you should be far far away from faith. Uh, there is no dichotomy in, in between the two. There is no contradiction between them. I I agree wholeheartedly, um, <sighs> but I it's it's interesting to me to hear you reveal your struggle with that and then how you resolved it. Yes, uh, of course, it took me many years to to uh, realize that. Yeah, um, it wasn't easy. Uh, it's an uphill journey, mm. and yet it's it's something that is beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I am curious about you you lived in the Middle East you moved to London and things that I have heard just on the radio and newscasts about some of the immigration problems uh, in London mm-hmm. and some of the prejudice against uh, people coming from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you experience any of that? I did, actually, yes. When I was doing my PhD, uh, especially during my PhD years, I did did experience some negative things. Uh, But uh, but also I I experienced some good things in my life. Um, So it's, it's the same with anyone, I think. You know, anyone could be discriminated against. Anyone could be... Um, uh, prejudiced, you know, you know, like um, could be uh, face discrimination and prejudice in any sort of form, um, in all parts of life and in in all stages of life, you know, like maybe someone could be discriminated because of their age, 
someone could be discriminated because it's you know it's you know she's a she or because of some other reason um so i did experience that but uh it was a challenge for me but then i i learned how to overcome that and i think that's the most important thing you know um of course it did leave some uh uh hurt in my heart you know sadness in my heart um but i was able to overcome that with many other things like finding good friends finding good environment for myself that i can i can nurture in that i can you know uh progress in yeah yeah mm-hmm. are you comfortable with describing maybe some of what that discrimination what what form it took yeah it's it was mainly like maybe in the workplace um you know kind of that um but uh uh of course so one of the reason one of the things that um one of the things that i experienced is was one of my colleagues that i was working uh, with um you know my colleague was supposed to help me you know try to organize my experiments and you know help me with the things in the lab laboratory but um on the contrary it was like uh, doing whatever uh, he, the person can to not help me to make it difficult more for me to make it more difficult uh, to make my life more difficult um because already we have difficulty in life as it is so as human beings we really really have to um appreciate each other because each of us are going through a struggle she probably was going through a struggle herself but she took it out on someone who she thought was quote unquote weak Mhm. Or it could be the reverse that the view was that you were a challenge to her and she didn't want to help you become <laughs> maybe some, maybe some, someone who would compete with her. Yeah, actually she wasn't in a st- in a situation who would compete with me. Oh, um okay. yeah. Uh, so uh we will always encounter such characteristics in our lives. But the most important thing is to know how to deal with them. uh in every situation. Yeah. Um we have to take it easy, you know, and uh not try to take it too personally, you know. Well, it sounds like you have a good solid core of faith and belief uh which gives you a strength. Absolutely, yes. F- uh, faith is a source of strength in our lives. It's a source th- source of uh comfort and consolation. um in in uh in the daily it, you know in and out challenges in in our lives um it, it's uh without it will ju- will basically be lost and very weak um and don't know how to overcome and surpass many challenges in our lives um and so it's a source of great strength So as as you were going through this experience in London uh away from your family uh did they s- still stay in the Middle East and they settled there and you were always separate from them did you go back and forth Um before I started my PhD I actually got married so oh. you know I had uh, a source of comfort at home um and that was very important for me you know i think family is another source of comfort in our lives uh you know someone who can be there to um for you to share your um you know uphills in life as long as you share them with someone i think you are able to cope more yeah. rather than just keep them in you and not share it with someone else So um that was a great source of comfort for me to be able to have a, you know a small nuclear family mm-hmm. uh, while I was doing my PhD and trying to overcome all these challenges yeah. to to graduate in the end. So at that point what what prompted then your move to Pittsburgh? Oh, How did that happen? My Pittsburgh uh, journey begins much much later. Um so um I was able to complete uh, with God's grace my my PhD 
And then I moved on to um, to Turkey. Um, that's where I started to teach. Uh, my started to teach molecular biology and genetics at Boğaziçi University, which is uh, one of the most well-known universities in, in, in Turkey. Yeah. Um, it's uh, situated in Istanbul. Uh, we had wonderful students. Um, I was teaching general biology and molecular biology to um, freshmen uh, and uh, junior um, uh, students at uh, college level. Um, and of course, this is an extremely materialistic environment. Uh, um, and so someone who has faith will feel lonely in that kind of environment. Um, but still, you know, these were my own people, you know, and, and I love them. And I wanted to, uh, you know, share with them what I learned, you know, over the years. So I was uh, appointed as a... Um, as a as a lecturer there, uh, to teach molecular biology. So was it unusual to be in that position as a woman, or uh, was it not unusual at the university level to have women instructors? Actually, it wasn't unusual. Most of the department was actually women. Oh, um, yeah. So we un- we only had uh, one male uh, colleague, and the rest of the department was uh, women. Even the head of the department was a woman. And each of these uh, people, they had their PhDs from Europe or from the USA. Um, and they were uh, trying to come back to their, you know, come back to their, uh, to their country and, and teach, teach uh, whatever they learned during their PhDs and their experiences while they uh, did research uh, abroad. Um, so it was, it was a, it was a, a difficult environment. Um, it wasn't easy, um, and uh, but uh, we were able to. I mean, I stayed there for one year only. I didn't. I couldn't stay for any more. Um, and I met a, a friend there who was doing a, a postdoctoral fellow here in the U.S. And he said to me, "You know, I will try to help you and give you a referral to one of my colleagues here in the U.S. and uh, so that you can come back." come to the U.S. and continue your studies. Okay. So, but but you're married at the time, so how did that work out with your husband and his work? And Oh, yeah, I mean, it worked perfectly well, and, you know, he was at the same, at, at the time, he was doing work on um, ex- exporting borium ore from, from Turkey uh, because his Ph.D. was in environmental science, um, and so he was very much involved in in borium ore export. And uh, when once I uh, got my position in in uh, in the USA, and it was confirmed, then he quit, and we came to the US. Oh. And so that was in the year two thousand and two. Okay. Um, and so my journey continued. Still, my spiritual journey um, continued to become better and better over the years. Um, as I read more and try to understand more, um, I think our spiritual journey very much depends on knowledge. Uh, to to understand knowledge uh, as it should be understood, um, to try to put everything in context. Um, you know, because we are born into this life, but we are we are so we are supposed to understand uh, life. Um, from a from a from a large perspective, you know, rather than just a, you know a sh- narrow perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I I was able to like uh, you know increase my reading, um, inc- try to increase my understanding um, as much as I can. Uh, and then after that, of course, you know, I I also had a child. I had a we had a a five six year old. While we were coming to the U.S., oh, um, okay. our our daughter, um, so I became a mother uh, at the time, and so you know, trying to become a mother, take care of my child, and then trying to do my career, mm-hmm. uh, it, it it was a lot of work. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, you know, I I enjoyed what I was doing. You know, it was a um, it was a great challenge. But you know, th- what y- there is nothing that isn't challenging at the time. Right. Uh, you know, in our lives, it's um, always a challenge. Okay, so at this point, you were doing postdoctoral work at the University of Pittsburgh, and for work, what were you doing? Were you teaching there also? Or? So it was research-based uh, at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. Um, it was research-based. We were we were working on human cells, you know, trying to understand the immune system and the molecular, you know, uh, you know, mechanisms involved in the immune immune response uh-huh. uh, using all sorts of methods and techn- techniques. Um, so, uh, trying to interrogate, you know, how, what happens in the cell uh, when when we have fever. Um, so all these molecular details that we try to understand, yeah. um, it's extremely like uh, molecular and extremely specific, you know, kind of mechanisms. Yeah, there there's some work that I've followed. Um, <laughs> by someone named uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton and his work on cellular biology uh, and the discovery that the cell membrane uh, actually responds to thoughts and emotions and that we are able to actually change our DNA through our thoughts and emotions. And I don't know if you're familiar with that work, but it was it was kind of startling to me <laughs> to discover that. Yes, so absolutely. I'm actually very interested in that kind of research. Um, uh, the universe that we li- we're living in is interconnected with each other. Yeah. Um, so the feelings of a human being and our thoughts and our emotions... Um, will definitely have effect on our health and uh, because it has the f- direct effect on our cells. Mm-hmm. It has direct effect on our tissues and on our organs. Um, in fact, uh, there has been a lot of research uh, shown that people who have high levels of stress uh, are at high risk for cancer. Uh, and cancer is basically... Um, you know, a mechanism where the the human cells in our cells in our body are uh, out of control. You know, there is no control in their growth or in their in their death. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's a very chaotic kind of you know cell growth. Uh, there are no control mechanisms. All the control mechanisms have been destroyed. And that's what leads to this kind of horrible disease. Um, and so when we have good thoughts and and hope in our life and faith, um, I think this definitely will affect ourselves um, in the short term and in the long term. Yeah. And and uh, there has to be more research in this fi- in this in this area. And yeah, it's I. I've read some of the research in that area, and it, mm-hmm. it just fascinates me. It's it absolutely really fascinating, absolutely yeah. fascinating, because, as I said, you know, the universe is interconnected with each other, um, and so whatever we think, whatever we uh, we feel, mm-hmm. will definitely affect us and affect ourselves. Now, just before we went on the air, I had had a conversation with you uh, about prayer life, and, and uh, I guess women standing at the back when the men are praying. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was surprised and, and fascinated by your response to that. So could you talk a, a little bit about uh, how you practice your faith and, and our conversation? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, our faith has multiple facets. It has a personal side, it has a family family side, and also it has a so- social side. 
Um, as someone of faith, we have several responsibilities. Uh, our primary responsibility is first to the Creator, who has created us in the most perfect way and sent us to this world uh, with a purpose. Um, and so we have a primary responsibility towards our Creator. Um, and then, secondly, I have a responsibility towards myself. So how do I gauge myself? How do I conduct myself? Uh, how do I think? How do I act uh, in my life? And um, am I responsible? Am I, am I someone who is um, hardworking? You know, these are very important uh, in, 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 our, in our life. So we have to be someone who has uh, a lot of good conduct, um, accountability, um, self-awareness, um, compassion, you know, you know, caring and understanding um, and, uh, and all these things. And then I have responsibility for my family members. Um, how do I treat my husband? How do I treat my children? And how do I treat my friends? How do I treat my relatives? And then uh, finally, how do I treat my community? Mm. And my community doesn't just mean uh, the same people who are like me, but everyone else. How do I treat them? Um, so I have t I try to be compassionate. I try to be just in my actions, in my words, uh, and in my thoughts. Um, uh, first and for for foremost, uh, first I have to correct my thoughts and my feelings so I can correct my uh, words and then I can connect, correct my actions. Uh, so uh, faith is an in inherent part of, of uh, my life. Um, uh, without it, I will not have any moral value uh, as such. Um, and so you mentioned about uh, the congregational prayer. Uh, the, uh, in, in congregational prayer, um, basically it means that it's we are expressing our gratitude not just as a person to the Creator, but in, in community, in a congregation. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Unity in our in our thoughts uh, should 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 be expressed or manifest uh, as unity in our in in our in our community. So when we are praying together in congregation, uh, it has to have a lot of respect and dignity. Um, it has to manifest a lot of respect and dignity. Um, and so the women are uh, standing at the back, so they can be more. Um, uh, they can be uh, more private. They can be at a more private uh, distance uh, f with themselves. And because when we, uh, of course, uh, we prostrate and place our forehead on the on the on the ground as an expression of gratitude and submission um, to the Creator, um, then it is best that the women are standing at the back. Uh, to be, you know, um, at a more private position yeah. than to stand in the front. Okay. Um, so. So it has nothing to do with men being more important than women. Absolutely not. No. Okay. It basically means that w they, the women are, uh, they they need more privacy, uh, more privacy, and so they are given more privacy in a in a congregational prayer. So being in the United States, being in Pittsburgh, and being a Muslim, uh, so you were here uh, just after 9-11. I'm, I'm just thinking about how that experience may have changed people's reaction to you as a Muslim and... Uh, how you experienced that and uh, what that meant to you and, and uh, what what you're doing now because I know you, you work with outreach to other communities and uh, other people of faith. 
So could you talk about that a little bit? Yes, absolutely, Bob. Thank you for asking that question. That's a very important part of my life. Um, We are very much involved in uh, outreach and uh, civic engagement with our community. And by community, I mean the public, you know, the general public. Um, And so we don't want people to misunderstand us. And so it's important that we are out there and visible um, and engaging with people and uh, sharing with them our thoughts and feelings and emotions um, to try to express ourselves in the community um, so that we can share with them uh, all the good things and the beauty uh, that we have in us, you know, that we believe that we have in us, and also to share what they have, uh, to be able to share what they have uh, with, the, with, with, with ourselves and also with, with the other people. And so it's important to get people to uh, talk to each other and to engage with each other and to form dialogue with each other so that we can break down prejudices. Mm -hmm. That the best way to break down prejudice amongst people is for people to get to know each other, you know, rather than them learning about me from someone else. Right. You know, Um, so I need to express myself rather than... Uh, allowing others to ga- gain all this misinformation uh, from other from other sources, yeah. and this is important. and And we have so much to share with people of other faith. You know, the Jews and the Christians, with with their different denominations. I think the most important thing is to realize that we are primarily and uh, we're f- first and foremost we are human beings. Mm-hmm. Um, that we have more commonalities between us than differences. Um, And we need to realize this in our lives, um, that we may be different, but that's just the diversity, um, that that our diversity should not be something that separates us, but brings us together um, in uh, productive ways. So how can people of different faiths or maybe people of no faith uh, can come together to serve their community, you know, to 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 um, overcome um, prejudice, overcome hatred, overcome animosity, overcome uh, poverty, um, and overcome ignorance. You know, these are the main issues and challenges in our society today. Yeah. And you can find these in, in every single country on the globe. And um, I- they are the most um, pressing issues that we have in, in the society. Yeah. And so how can we come together and work together to overcome them? Yeah. Um, and I think this is, a, you know, very important work. And of course, me as a scientist, you know, I can incorporate, uh, you know, uh, so much into this too, you know, and I believe that I can, I can contribute so much into that. Um, and uh, try to share my ideas and and my thoughts um, with my with my community and the society. Okay. Well, uh, this has been fascinating. As always, I I, I hate it when when these things end because it's it just feels like we could talk and talk and talk. Uh, so one thing that I, that I ask of my guests is if there's anything that they would like to leave our audience with in terms of some thoughts uh, that they could take with them into the rest of their week uh, because they get a homework assignment that they should consider what they've heard uh, and decide what resonates with them, what they would like to take in, uh, and they can just discard the rest. But we try to learn something from our guests uh, every week. So with that, uh, are there any comments you'd like to leave our audience with? Well, I really appreciate your time here today with me um, to um, take this time to interview me. Um and uh, I think it's very, very important that uh, we do this 
with uh, other people of faiths, uh, other people of different um, uh, lifestyles and backgrounds. Uh, I think the most important thing is that we should see a, a, hu- a human being like an undiscovered universe. You know, um, we are more than the parts that make us. Um, that each human being has so much to offer to this world. Um, and that we should uh, view them in that way. Um, and we should try to learn from others. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. So we until next it. time, um, this has been your spiritual journey. And have a good week. <laughs>